Hello and welcome to this session in which we will work a CPA exam simulation that deals with earnings and profit. It's very important to understand how do we compute current earnings and profit that eventually lead to our earnings and profit in order to determine whether a distribution is considered dividend, return of capital, or capital gains. So as a future CPA or as an accounting student or as an enrolled agent, this is an important topic. And what I have here is a series of transactions and the question is, can you determine the impact of each transaction on taxable income and on earnings and profit, whether it's an increase, a decrease, or it has no impact? So what I suggest you do, pause and see if you can find the impact before I work this exercise. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Let's go ahead and get started. Starting with the first transaction, $70,000 of federal income taxes were paid in the current year. How would that affect taxable income? How would that affect earnings and profits? How would that affect taxable income? Well, if you pay taxes, how does it affect taxable income? No impact. You cannot deduct the, ta the federal income taxes on your taxable income. You wrote a check, but you cannot do that. How does it affect your earnings and profit, which is your dividend paying capacity? It's going to do what? It's going to reduce your dividend paying capacity. And here's what I'm going to do here, just kind of remind you, it's a negative. So make sure on the exam, I'm adding this to remind you, if it says in the instruction of the simulation, put it as negative, make sure you put it as negative. Let's take a look at the next transaction. Maker's depreciation of 90,000, alternative depreciation rate is 100,000. So for makers, which one is, how does it affect taxable income? If a taxes is makers, if a taxes is a maker taxes, does it affect your taxable income? Yes, we use makers for taxable income. How much is the deduction? 90,000 for makers. Now, what about the adjustment for earnings and profit? Because we should have used for alternative depreciation rate, we should have used the 100,000 of depreciation. What type of adjustment we need to make for earnings and profit? Do you know? And the answer is deduct an additional 10,000. Why? Because you already deducted 90,000 to arrive to taxable income, but to arrive to earnings and profit, deduct an additional 10,000. So that's why the adjustment is negative 10,000. So in total, because from taxable income, you deducted 90, then you deduct an additional earnings and profit of 10, you came up with 100,000, end up deducting 100,000. As an extra first year bonus depreciation of 50,000 was claimed in the current year. How would that affect your taxable income? Is first year bonus depreciation allowed? And the answer is yes. How is that going to affect your taxable income? It's going to reduce your taxable income by 50000 Well, how would that affect earnings and profit? What did we learn about extra first year bonus depreciation? Well, that deduction is not allowed for earnings and profit. So after you get to your taxable income to go to your earnings and profit, you are going to add back the 50000 Therefore, as far as CEP, the effect of that is zero because you deducted it for taxable income. You, you add it back for earnings and profit, the effect is zero. Section 179 deduction amounting to 100,000 was claimed in the current year. So for, so for tax purposes, you took a $100,000 section 179 deduction. How would that affect your taxable income? Duh. It's going to reduce your taxable income by exactly 100,000. So that's the in the current year, and that's the first year of this deduction. How much of this deduction should be taking on EMP. So can you take the full 100,000? Uh, is it suspended like the first year depreciation, the, the, the first year extra bonus depreciation? 
And the answer is no. It is allowed. However, you have to take the deduction over five years. So in the first year, when you took that deduction, you have to say, okay, I have to spread this over five years. If I have to spread this over five years, I, I can only take a deduction of 20,000. So if I can only take a deduction of 20,000 in the year I took the 100,000, I have to add back 80,000 of EMP. As a result, for EMP, I technically took only negative 20,000. Now, impact of the current year section 179 and succeeding years on the next five years or the next following year that's we're assuming it's five years because i divided it by five what's going to happen in year two for this section 179 how would that affect your taxable income no effect on your taxable income so we're discussing this section 179 why because the full 100,000 was taken in year one i took the 100,000 I, I can no longer deduct this what do i have to do now for amp now i'm going to start to deduct those 20,000, and that's gonna happen for the next, you know, this was year one, which is I added 80, but as a result, the net effect was negative 20. In year two, I deduct negative 20, year three, negative 20, so on and so forth. Over the next five years, I can take the full deduction. Dividend amounting to 30,000 were received from a corporation with a 5% ownership stake along with the dividend received deduction. And we're going to assume taxable income limit is not applicable. In other words, we can take the dividend received deduction. So if you receive $30,000 of dividend and you own 5% in that company, what's going to happen is this. You're going to report the dividend. Then you're going to have a dividend received deduction of 50% of the dividend. What can you do for the taxable income? What can you do? You are going to add back 15000 to your taxable income. In other words, it's going to, it's going to the net effect on taxable income, you're going to add, you're going to add 30, you're going to add 30, then you're going to have a deduction of 15 of the dividend received deduction at 30 minus 15. The net effect on taxable income is 15,000. How about earnings and profit? Well, remember here, let me put this in a different color. You took, you made a, you made, you, you made, uh, you made a, a deduction of 15,000 here that's called dividend received deduction. Well, this dividend received deduction is basically a phantom deduction. It reduced your taxable income by 15,000, which you wanted it. But did it really reduce, did, did you pay for it? And the answer, you did not pay for this dividend received deduction, this was given. Therefore, for earnings and profit, you add back this 15,000. So as far as earnings and profit, the total is the total dividend is 30,000 and it should be accounted for 15,000 came from taxable income then you add back the 15,000 that you took as a deduction and all in all for EMP you have you received 30,000 of dividend and that's part of your div your dividend paying capacity let's take a look at this example the equipment was sold to unrelated party for 360 with a basis of 240 you didn't opt out of the installment method and no payment were received in the current year. Well, in other words, you sold an asset and you use you are using the installment method and no payment was received in the current year. Well, if no payments are received and you did not opt out of the installment method, as far as taxable income, there's no taxes, no impact on taxable income because under the installment method, you only get taxed when the money is received. You did not receive any money. How about for earnings and profit? What did we learn about the installment method? Well, regardless whether you receive the payment or not, you have to include the profit and EMP for that year. And what's the profit? 360 minus 240 amount realized minus the basis will add 120 on earnings and profit. So this is a CPA exam simulation. It's a great exercise that illustrated, and I would not be surprised if you see something like this on the exam. You have to be very, very careful in, in order to analyze each transaction separately. And don't forget whether it's a deduction to put the pluses or the minuses, follow the instruction. You have to understand how each item affect taxable income and earnings and profit. I'm gonna have a summary, one, one session summary of all these adjustments, but you cannot memorize those adjustments. You, it, it will be too much to memorize. Understand them, understand them. And once you understand them, that's gonna help you in future chapters as well. You know, schedule M1, 
How does it affect taxes? How does it affect books? So you have to understand how a transaction affect your taxable income. How does it affect your earnings and profit, which is your dividend paying capacity? Same thing, you have to understand how certain items affect your taxes and how the same item affect your books and do the reconciliation between them. My job is to help you understand this concept inside out. What should, you do, what should you do now to understand it further? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, true false, true false questions, additional exercises to test your knowledge. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.